everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today we are going to be breaking down the first night of the WWE Draft 2019 taking place last night on Friday Night Smackdown Live on Fox. We got the first few picks of the draft and then of course the following round will be on Monday Night Raw. We will get the rest of our draft and then the rest of the people who do not get picked will be able to sign with whatever side they want to do. Raw and Smackdown. Last night we had the Raw side and then we had the Smackdown side and there were some things that I did not like about this show about you know the draft and how they broke it down. I'm going to get into that and then I'm going to tell you the things about it that I do like and everything. We're going to just take you through the rosters that you know ended up on Monday Night Raw and then the rosters that ended up on Friday Night Smackdown. What I expected and you know sort of how it all played out. So first of all if you guys did watch my predictions video I did predict that the man Becky Lynch would be the first overall pick and that is what took place. We did get the man going number one overall. Of course our night started off with Seth Rollins going one on one with Roman Reigns. Very solid matchup to open up the show. I thought this was an excellent match. Uh, the Fiend obviously interfered. We all kind of expected that. You know, you can't have your Universal Champion lose, and Roman Reigns, you know, they're going to protect him at all costs as well, so they had to have the Fiend interfere, so that was a pretty cool moment, though. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was pretty cool. The Fiend, like, took Seth Rollins under the ring, but then Seth Rollins came back. I think it would have been better if, you know, he just pulls him under the ring and then he disappears. That would have been pretty cool, but I guess the way that it all played out, they had to book it the way they did, but I want to get into what my biggest gripe was about the draft, guys. Okay, so if you know the NFL NFL or NBA draft, if you guys don't know what the NFL or NBA draft is, it's basically where, you know, young upcoming talent from the college level of sports are going into the professional leagues of the NFL and the NBA. So if you have played three years in the in college football or one year of college basketball, you are eligible to go to the NBA or NFL drafts. So in these drafts, there's 30 teams, you get 30 picks, or in the NFL you get 32 picks total for each round. In these pools, they don't say well, draft night one, you can only select from this specific few of superstars. Everyone is eligible to be drafted. It is up to the teams and it is up to each GM and their owners to decide who they want to take, whether it be the greatest player, you know, because they've scouted it, they know this guy right here, without a doubt, is going to be the best, or if they take a chance on a guy at number two overall and they think, you know, maybe he's not the highest rated, but we think he's most valuable, we want to go after this guy. It's not, these are who are available to be drafted, and then on night two, we can pick up the rest of them. That is the way that WWE did this thing, and I don't appreciate that. I thought that was really horse crap. Okay, so they had like 30 superstars who were eligible to be drafted on night one here on SmackDown, but then you could only pick from that pool. You couldn't go outside of that pool, and that was against the draft rules. I didn't like that. I think that's total bull crap. I think you should be able to draft whoever the hell you want. That's an official draft. It's not, you know, pick who we decide you can pick. It's pick who's ever, ever available. So when Becky Lynch got taken, if SmackDown Live wanted to take Seth Rollins, they could have taken Seth Rollins, you know what I'm saying? Just just because he's not eligible on this night, what kind of sense does that make, you know? I, I, I just found that annoying. I didn't like how they did that. I understand why they did it. I just wasn't, I, I didn't agree with it. I know that they did that so that you would have star power on Monday Night Raw so you can still have Brock Lesnar and Seth and Charlotte all go on Monday Night Raw, but I just thought it, it was weird, man. It just, it, I don't know, it just didn't make any sense to me. I think it would have been better if you just laid out everybody in this first round, you know, your champions and everything like that, and then there would have still been been plenty of talent to pick over going into Monday Night Raw, I think. I think that there would have been plenty of talent. Like, this isn't near all the talent on the roster. You guys can see here, Monday Night Raw side is overloaded because SmackDown Live, we don't have most of those figures that, that went over there, but that's just something I wanted to talk about. But getting into the draft, guys, I mean, once we got started going, um, I did notice that there was an article that WWE.com posted where they were talking about the draft, and they were talking about, you know, the pools for each night, you know. I didn't know until the draft started that that's what they were doing, so I was totally confused and shocked by that once the show started, but on night one, you know, they had, you know, Friday Night Smackdown, here's the superstars you can get, and then on Monday Night Raw, here's the superstars you can get, and they legitimately, guys, they put it in the order that Stephanie McMahon announced the picks, so the draft was pretty much spoiled for everyone before it even started, and I thought that was hilarious, and leave it to WWE to do some stuff like that, it's just, my God, man, like, can we get some, can we get some stuff going? But before we get into, you know, everything else about the show that I enjoyed, Let's go ahead and run down who all Raw got. Of course, in the first round, Becky Lynch. The OC was Raw's second pick, and then Drew McIntyre was the third pick. I thought that was very interesting for Drew McIntyre to go over to the Monday, to Monday Night Raw. I thought that was an excellent pick as far as, you know, I, I like that he got picked pretty high up, but again, he got picked pretty
pretty high up because there was nobody really else that was eligible to be drafted. So uh, that was interesting to see Drew McIntyre go for the third overall pick to Raw. Or I should say the third pick to Raw, not the third overall. The third overall pick was the OC, AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. So the rest of the Raw picks, guys, was Randy Orton, Ricochet, Bobby Lashley, Alexa Bliss, Kevin Owens, Natalya, the Viking Raiders, Nikki Cross, and the Street Profits. Another thing I'll say, guys, is why did they take Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross separately? Why wouldn't you just take them two and one to cut down on a pick so you get an extra superstar? Wasn't that dumb, too? Like, why not take them together? Because they're a tag team. That didn't make any sense. You went against your own rule there. Coming back over to the SmackDown side, guys, we have Roman Reigns, Bray Wyatt, the theme. Big acquisition right there. That is one of the names that I thought uh, that, that was, you know, that I said could have went over to Fox because I knew Fox really wanted the theme over there. Braun Strowman, another huge name that ended up on SmackDown side of things, and I think that's good for him. I, I think, get, see, to be honest with you, I wanted him, McIntyre, and Ricochet all to go to SmackDown. I just feel like seeing them on Monday Night Raw, it's just gotten stale. I don't know what it is, but that's just my own personal opinion. Also missing from over here is Lacey Evans and the rest of Lucha House Party. You have Kalisto right here. You have Heavy Machinery, and then of course your SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions, The Revival, who also got picked to SmackDown. And uh, breaking down both sides, I mean, I, I knew Roman Reigns would stay on Fox. Again, we talked about The Fiend moving over. I think Sasha Banks moving over. We predicted that. I think that is an excellent acquisition for her. She needed to get over to the Blue Brand, separate from Becky, build up on that women's division, and just kind of see what we can lead to. Braun Strowman, again, we discussed that. I like him going over to SmackDown. Even though I didn't think it was going to happen, I still think it's good for him. Over here, we did call that AJ Styles, Randy Orton, and Becky Lynch would all go to Raw. I am kind of bummed for Kevin Owens. I think I predicted him to go to Raw, but I still, I don't like seeing it. You know, there's so many big names over here. It's going to be very interesting to see where it goes. But over here, you do have some pretty good names. You have Drew McIntyre, Becky Lynch. You got, you know, Kevin Owens, the OC. I'm guessing Lana will come with Bobby Lashley. And since I guess Bobby Lashley and Lana came over to Raw, I'm guessing Rusev will also come over to Raw. But I do like that Randy Orton switched brands. But what a lot of people are saying also, guys, is it seems like a lot of these people stayed on the same brands that they were already a part of before the wild card rule even took place. You know, there are some big things that switched over. I think The Fiend, Sasha Banks, Braun Strowman, and Randy Orton are probably the biggest acquisitions, which are, you know, that's four total big mix-ups there. But uh, I still think that, uh, it, it, I don't know, both rosters kind of just seem, I don't know at this point. I guess we'll know, we'll have a better idea of it following Monday Night Raw and the rest of the draft. But you guys know that we have the Universal Champion Seth Rollins. We have Brock Lesnar still to be drafted. We still have a ton of tag teams still to be drafted. I guess it's obvious now that since AJ Styles went over to Raw, Shinsuke Nakamura will most definitely be coming over to SmackDown. Bayley is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. She defeated Charlotte. She turned heel. You know, she took that freaking, I don't even know what the hell that was. It was like a sharp kendo stick looking thing to those uh, inflatable flailing arm tube men. She's going over to SmackDown, obviously, since she's the new SmackDown Women's Champion. And one thing that I do want to mention also, now that more I'm thinking about it, it's like it kind of doesn't work out for Kevin Owens anywhere because now that he's on Monday Night Raw, it's kind of a bigger pond. But at the same time, he's so damn good, guys. He should be he should be a freaking world champion all the time. The man's an absolute beast. Dude should be draped in gold all the freaking time. And I'm kind of glad he got away from SmackDown. And I know Shane McMahon's not going to be around for a while, but seeing him, you know, be over there following the 20. 17 Superstar Shake-Up and going through that stuff with Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn, and Shane McMahon, and then going through our more stuff with Shane McMahon and all that. It is kind of good to see him back over on Raw side. But getting into the other things that took place on this night, guys, I just felt like, I don't know, we got to see Chad Gable and Trash Corbin again. Like, that's like the eighth time we've seen that. I think it's literally the fourth or fifth time we've seen that, and I think that is getting old. A lot of people are hating on the name Shorty by, you know, Chad Gable and the name that gave him, and that's just, that's just, I, I just don't even know what to say to that. I don't think I'll ever call him that, to be honest with you. I am ready for Monday Night Raw's draft just so we can finally see the rest of the rosters. I think that, you know, I, I bet if you went over to that article that I was talking about with WWE.com, I think that you could sort of just project where everybody's going to go. I bet. I hope, hopefully they didn't really post it in order. I bet they did, though. I bet. I mean, I can guarantee it. It's going to be, if SmackDown Live gets the first pick or SmackDown gets, if SmackDown gets the first pick, they're going to go Brock, and then Raw's going to go Seth Rollins, and then SmackDown's going to go Bayley, and then Raw is going to go I, I can't remember what the list is, but that's, I'm sure that's how it's going to go. But the one thing I wanted to discuss, guys, is I, the way they had like all the Fox football, the NFL analysts on the show, I thought that was really terrible just because like I don't think that WWE fans and wrestling fans, first of all, they, they first of all probably don't know who a lot of those guys are that are breaking down those matchups and Troy Aikman and Joe Buck and Terry Bradshaw and stuff. It's kind of weird because it's kind of mixing my two things that I love, football and wrestling, but it just doesn't come off good. Like Those people don't give a shit about wrestling. They don't care about Roman Reigns. They don't care about Randy Orton. When we care about these guys, you know, we care about it. And I feel like they kind of make a mockery.
mockery about it, you know, in, in certain terms. I think that some of them know what's going on. I think that some of them kind of know it, but none of those men watch professional wrestling on a daily basis or on a weekly basis like we do. They don't know any of that stuff, and, you know, Troy Aikman was breaking down the pile driver, and Joe Buck is like, learn something new every day, and, you know, I just learned something from Troy Aikman. And you put this guy on WWE television when, like, he doesn't even know what a pile driver is. He doesn't care what a pile driver is. I, I just don't... I don't understand why you would do that. The war rooms, I think, were a good idea. You know, the war rooms are, you know, we had the raw war room where it's all the USA analysts and they're breaking down their picks. And then you had the, the Fox war room where all the guys are breaking down the picks. But it just came off so, like... Like, to me, it just seemed it disgenuine. It didn't seem real. It, se it seemed very fake. It seemed kind of cringy. Uh, guys weren't even really paying attention. They're, like, jotting down, like, fake notes. Like, they're not even writing. And it just looked so fake. It didn't look genuine to me. And it just made everything look kind of jackassery. I, I don't know. I, I just didn't feel like it was important to anybody. And they just get... It's like Stephanie McMahon coming out and announcing every pick was kind of lame for me as well. I think it would have been much cooler to have Bischoff and Heyman do it. I think that would have been excellent, you know, have those guys announce each pick, you know, talk some trash back and forth, but the reason they didn't do that is because not everybody was eligible, you know, like, they've never done that eligible thing before, they've never once done, well, these guys are the only ones that are eligible, and then these guys will be eligible the next time, and that's why it wasn't super competitive for this draft, because it's not, you know, I can't pick anyone I want, so that is just what the biggest turnoff for me is. I am happy, this is the ultimate thing, guys, is that I am super happy we have a raw roster and a smash. SmackDown roster and following Monday Night Raw we will be completely done with the wild card rule for sure and there won't be any flip flop we will have our Raw show our SmackDown show and it will be it will be much better than the wild card rule that trash was terrible I think everybody can agree with that and I just wanted to give my thoughts and opinions on everything regarding the WWE Draft 2019 and just giving my, my own personal thoughts and opinions I would love to know yours down in the comment section below do you agree with me what did, what did you think what do you think about these Fox analysts the football like NFL Fox analysts and you know the commentators and stuff what do you think about those guys being on our televisions and talking about wrestling I just don't buy it I, I they just don't come across as real to me and it just seems really phony and it just I don't know man but again I would love to know all of your thoughts down in the comment section below I think that is everything guys I try my best to try to get everything out in the open break down everything for you guys what do you guys think I think for the most part that Monday Night Raw won I mean they got three picks for every two over here and while they got Roman and the Fiend I'm not big on Braun Strowman and I, I honestly, I think that the, the Raw obviously won. I mean, you have AJ, Randy, Drew, Kevin, Ricochet, Becky Lynch. You did get Sasha over here, I guess. The Revival was a good pick. Just one thing that I try to note as well is like, why wouldn't you want your champions first, right? Like, they're supposed to mean something. They're supposed to be big. Why wouldn't you want your champions first? I, I don't know. Well, they're not eligible. Well, that's bullcrap. Why aren't they eligible? It's just stupid, man. But anyways, guys, that is going to do it. I hope to see Monday Night Raw do a little bit better with the draft. I guess we don't have to look forward to any football analysts breaking down wrestling and, and not knowing what the hell they're talking about. But thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.